My name is Thomas de Wind, and I'm a prosthesist and tortoisist. I normally make legs for people to walk when they lose a leg, or corrective devices. But in the beginning of this year, I had this very special patient, a dolphin. And uh, this dolphin got seriously injured on its dorsal fin. And they called me from the Dolphin Academy, asking me if I had thermoplastic material. And I said, well, let's talk about it. Maybe I can help you a little more than that. So that's when the whole story started. This is the dolphin, and you can see with a serious injury on the dorsal fin, cutting through quite close, till quite, quite close to the base from, from the top. And they tried different methods to suture it at first. And the sutures were not holding out because with the pressure of the water, with the animal moving, it was not enough to get a good healing process. So we talked about it, and I had, uh, I had the guys from the Dolphin Academy coming to my lab and discussing how we should do it, because I didn't know anything about dolphins. Hey, I make legs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I said, okay, tell me everything so I can incorporate it in the design and we see what happens. Okay? So here you have the actual mold. And you can see with the shape like this, you cannot go around it. You, you can't wrap around it. So first, we had to bring the two sides of the wound together because they were falling apart. But you can't wrap. So I used a self-adhesive um, material, a plastic material, so I can, could pull it together and then pull the two sides of the wound together. I had leftover on the sides, which, which I could trim. And then I was ready to start making a plaster mold because I needed to have a mold to have the exact shape. Now this is where we finally got the animal on the jetty because the first attempt, the animal was just too wild and we couldn't get it at ease on the jetty. And in the second attempt, yes, we got it still. We put everything together. But then when you put plaster to make a mold, there is only a small window of time in the setting process where it's still flexible enough to pull it off because you have to imagine you have this shape and if it's getting too hard you just can't pull it off you have to just break it off you don't want to do that but we managed we got it off right and we had a wonderful shape and you can see this is the veterinarian how happy he was that so far so good and here you see the negative. This is the shape, and then prepared to pour plaster in. Now, you can <coughs> notice, or you might know, that it's getting very thin to the back. So we had to use a mixture of special plaster, uh, also a kind of plaster that is normally used uh, in the fabrication of teeth to make it strong while still thin. And we had to weld a special reinforcement to go inside the mold. And here you can see where we pull the negative off, and there appears the positive. Um, it's a little dark. 
but you can't see exactly what you can see here where the cut started going all the way down to the base. But here you can see it better. You can see here. And this is still the rough mold. So we had to work on this mold to prepare it to make the actual device. So what were we facing when we want to do something like this for a dolphin? Well, that's what I discovered. It had to be sturdy on one hand to support the two sides of the wound. It had to be sturdy because the normal fin also is sturdy in the front and very flexible to the back. Actually, a fin like this is also like a keel of a ship. And on the other side, it's also to maneuver. So you can compare it with the mast in the front where you have the stronger part and a very flexible part to the back. It's a very important part of the animal to maneuver. That's why we had to do such a big effort to get it fixed. And of course, if you have a device fitted around it, you have to realize that you have to have a very perfect fit because any abrasion of movement uh, of the device would then just make a new wound and you're back in trouble. And if you also another thing is if you just cover if you just cover the fin you have another problem because the fin is responsible for the temperature control of the animal. The animal, the dolphin, has blubber all over its body, except the fins. So if you just cover the fins, you have a dead animal. So we needed to create a device which could have water immersed in it, but also get water circulation in the device. Now, if you have a wound, you want to see it from the outside. So the device had also had to be transparent so you could notice if anything would go wrong. And a big animal like that, you know it's a mammal, so the trunk has to be able to move with the device on for the breathing process. So also in this direction, the device needed to be flexible enough. And then, well, I don't know if you guys saw the film uh, A Dolphin's Tail. They had a year and a half to make different designs, test them. The animal would not accept it, make a next one. But I had only two days. <laughs> because. <laughs> I had only two days because they were ordering some special matrix material that's made of a bladder of a pig and the matrix material produces a better adherence of the new cells and we wanted of course to have a sturdy connection uh, with the healing process. And somebody would come from the States with this material to apply it and then everything had to be ready. So we had two days to think how to do it, to design it, to fabricate it. And this is the rough device that we made. Actually, we did it with bubble forming. That is, you have a plastic plate, you heat it up, and then you pull the shape with vacuum over your mold. This was the mold. But then, how do you get thickness in the front and flexibility to the back? Well, we had to manipulate it, and you had only seconds to do that before the material would cool. Pulling it all back, manipulating it, we could get exactly that. A strong area in the front and very flexible to the end, so the animal could tense the back part as a sail to move and curve as it was using the device. Now, how does it all work? Here you see the completed device. 
And you can see here, on the, the horizontal lines here, these are channels that have an opening in the back, an opening, an opening in the back, sorry, an opening in the front. And there was also an opening here in the back, the holes for the water to immerse inside. It is transparent. These holes made it possible for the water to come in from the front and flow through to the back. So we had water circulation, which made it possible for the animal to control its, its, its temperature without overheating. Here you see the process at the makeshift uh, operating theater where the matrix material was sutured in. And you can also notice that the animal out of the water has to be cooled with bags of ice. This was the last piece of matrix material for the outside area. Here you can see a close-up of it, sutured in. And this was the big moment. <laughs> because we just finished it like half an hour before they would finish the suturing procedure. <laughs> and we didn't know if all the ideas that we had would really work. So, this is the moment where we just slid it on and, okay, it fitted. <laughs> we also designed special, we also designed special straps with silicone coverage for it to hold and not give any abrasion on the body side. Here you see the animal in the water. The words of the trainer were amazing and wow, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and they were checking everything. They were checking and to see if there was any abrasion inside. They were even smelling if there is any infection going on. All of that was perfect, and it was just the one try that fitted and worked, and you see the animal moving, breathing. We checked the temperature on different times, and the temperature control was excellent, no problems. So we could complete the weeks, the six weeks necessary for the treatment to heal the fin. And here you see the animal at ease in the water. And it was a successful project. <laughs> Thank you very much.